Kristen Chantrell. I now call the East Lyme Inland Wetland Agency special meeting of May 10th, 2021 to order at 7.01 p.m. This meeting is being held via video conference on Zoom. Um, so for commissioners that are present, I have Jason Diebel, Don Finister, Dave Schmidt, Phyllis Berger, and then a recording secretary, Sue Spang, and we have Gary Gaishel, the Inland Wetlands agent. Um, let's see. So I'm just gonna go over a few things. Um, just a few reminders. Please remember that while unmuted, we can hear you and everything going on around you. We can also see you. Board members and staff will be unmuted during the entire meeting. As required by executive order, everyone must state their name, where they're from prior to speaking, each time they speak. If you wish to speak during public delegation, please send a chat message to Gary Gaishel. Please wait to be called on by the chairman or Mr. Gaishel to speak. Once you have finished speaking, please mute your microphone or phone. During each agenda item, only the board, staff, and presenters will be unmuted to speak on that particular item. Only one person may speak at a time. Board members will be called upon to provide comment via a roll call. Members and alternates for all motions in the interest of making sure we have a clear record, please plan on roll call votes so the public and Sue taking minutes can be very clear of, on the record. Only hosts are permitted to share screens at this time. Any documents to be shared must come through Gary. As required by executive order, all documents being discussed and reviewed at the meeting must be posted on the town website no later than 24 hours prior to the meeting. The, this entire meeting is automatically recorded by Zoom and upon the host logging out, the meeting will cease and so will the recording. The meeting cannot continue without the host. So to start, um, do we have any additions to the agenda? I have none for you. I don't know if anyone else has any. Doesn't look like it. Okay. All right. Um, we also do not have a public hearing today. Um, so going to public delegations, if there's any member of the public that would like to speak to the commission about certain matters, issues or concerns related to approved wetlands permitted permits and in-house proposals or general topics of discussion are open to comment. Agenda items, referrals, applications, subject to a decision by the commission, a public hearing or in litigation may not be discussed. We have one caller, uh, 739-3830. Do you have any public delegations? Now's the time. Hi, Gary. It's Barbara Johnston. Hi, Barbara. Do How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Do you have any public delegations? Anything you want to say? Well, not really. Um, I'm not prepared to do anything like that tonight, but basically just keep up the good work. Thank you, Barbara. Yep. All right. Um, so moving on, the acceptance of minutes. Um, the meeting minutes of the April 12th, 2021 regular meeting. Do I have a, a motion to approve or deny the meeting minutes? Hi, right, this is Jason. I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Thank you, Jason approves, Dave seconds. And just a raise of hands, um, all those in favor. All right, that's everybody. Um, ex officio report, he's not here. So we'll move on to new business. Um, the application to conduct regulated activities. So I will, let's see, regulated activities, including but not limited to clearing and grading and the construction of a driveway extension to access a new proposed single family dwelling by Robert Fanner P-E-L-S for owner, Daniel, not sure how to say that, jerk gag, J, I don't know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Daniel, <Jerk Jake. laughs> don't ask me to say that. A, a property located at 29 Rocco Drive, East Lime, Assessor's Map 44, Lot 19-14. So 
So I will turn that over to Mr. Fanner, if you'd like to present. All right, I'm muted. Can you hear me now? Yep. yep. Okay, yeah. This is a, uh, this is a, uh, we're building up on the top of the hill on 29 Rocco Drive. Uh, and uh, we have a wetlands crossing of a uh, seasonal brook uh, about 25 feet in, or 25, maybe 50 feet in from uh, the existing driveway. Uh, I have plans where we're, uh, we've, uh, we've designed it to minimum, minimum uh, problems with the wetlands. I, I have uh, a report from my wetlands scientist, uh, which uh, discusses it. I won't say other than uh, it's, it's Ian Smith. It was in, I, I handed in with the application and uh, he made an assessment, explained everything about it. Uh, I suggest you read it. And his conclusion was uh, basically that it will have no, no adverse effect whatsoever. Uh, and uh, uh, I will say that I, I gave you a, a pretty detailed uh, uh, plans showing uh, the grading and the uh, slope and how we're handling the drainage. And the drainage is also, I, I gave a, 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 a report to the town engineer, which we'll hear about at the next meeting, uh, uh, which uh, explains everything we did and uh, and. I'm sure uh, he'll agree with everything. If he doesn't, we'll, we'll, we'll change it. But, uh, 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 and, uh, you know, and in a hundred foot, that, that's all we're doing now. And in a 300 foot, it's just a matter of, it's just the driveway that goes on up the hill to the house, which is at the very back of the property. I think the property is, I don't know, it's quite large. It's, it's one lot. I don't know offhand, but. Yeah, I thought I saw it was like 56 acres or something. Well, it was really big. I don't think it's quite that big, but it's big, yes. Yeah. I thought I saw that somewhere. Well, anyway, it's big and it's one lot. And, and we're going all the way up to the back of it. It does have uh, lots of wetlands and lots of ledge, <clears throat> um, but it's going to be a beautiful house up there that she has uh, the architect working on. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that's all I have for now. I gladly answer any questions any of the members have at this time. Briefly, you're proposing putting a pipe in to hold the water from the water course that runs through there now, correct? Um, I'm putting a, a very oversized pipe, 36 inch pipe to, 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 to get the, uh, remember it's, it's like a little gully in there that they've dug. And, uh, and uh, actually the reason I'm putting it in so large uh, is so we don't have any uh, uh, increase in rate ra rise in, in the water as it goes through that area. So it goes through just as it does now. Uh, and it usually only goes through uh, in the spring. It doesn't even flow in the fall usually. Um, and it does definitely doesn't flow in the summer. And we plan on doing this work in the summer when it's completely dry. Uh, and, and, uh, go ahead. And that pipe would be what, 20, 25, 30 feet in length under the driveway? The crossing, the crossing uh, is, I think, a total of uh, uh, 48 feet head wall to head wall. And, and that gives us access for an 18 foot road, slopes, head wall at each end of it, and then riprap uh, outside the head wall to make sure that uh, you don't get any uh, uh, erosion afterwards and, and the slope is very 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 shy i think it only goes what does it go uh i think a foot a foot across there approximately thank you which is the natural slope of the land i i, I held the, the invert on one side and the invert on the other side so it doesn't change any Is the um, the construction of the house is that outside the three hundred foot upland review area? No. No. No, it's it's partially in it because there's another little wetlands that goes up the hill, um, and that goes up by the house. 
and, 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 and that's in the 300 foot. The house is not in the 100 foot. It's in the 300 foot. Of course, everything in the town is almost in the 300 foot. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah. It's outside the 100 foot. It's inside the 300 foot, except for maybe a corner of the garage. Okay, yeah, because I did see the other wetlands location on the map that was looked to be a little bit closer to the house. So I was wondering how far away. Yeah, well, I have it flagged. If you look on a one page, it, it shows where the 100 foot comes and, and it misses everything. And, and then it's in between 100 and 300 foot. We have a, a part of the driveway and the, and the, and the, and the property in it. Can you see that up on the, on the yeah, and is, is the septic, is that? Yeah, up, up in the right hand corner, the, the, the first, the lower line is the 100 foot uh, buffer. I and, see. And the area you're pointing to now is the 300 foot buffer. Okay. All right, and this is quite rocky up there and, and, and steep. And, and that's why, uh, well, actually, this is like a, a, a rock cliff that will coming off of here. And then, uh, and it's all rocky and, and, uh, and, and steep through this whole area. It doesn't look like you're clearing all that much. We're just, I cleared a minimum, for, what, what we're just clearing is the minimum for the, for the road. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, no, we'll seed it and what have you when you're done and it'll grow back quick enough because there's a lot of growth up there, small, young growth and small growth. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, it's minimum going up the hill. I only open up when we get by the house, but that's just for the grading we have to do to get it to work nice. But this is, you guys, you can see I'm just going just, just, just past the uh, bottom of the slope everywhere. And um, I, I know you were having a conversation with uh, one of our members about the, uh, the septic. Can you just go through that a little bit with us? Sure. We, we, we did extensive testing and we found uh, the best area was where I have it. Uh, uh, up further, uh, it, uh, it tended to be too, too ledgy. In other words, there was two ledge less than four feet almost everywhere. Uh, and then down in this area here, between 100 and 200 feet, uh, we found several areas, and this was the closest one to the driveway that uh, we could get a septic system in, and, uh, and without, with minimum grading, and of course, more than 100 feet away from the wetlands. That's the reason for it there, and 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 we piped that down just like we piped with you. Uh, we we piped that in in uh, in a four inch pipe coming down the hill, along where the driveway is. Right, right in the driveway. Okay. So there's no more disturbance with that, as as we do with the drainage. Mm -hmm. I pick the drainage up. We catch it in a swale, treat it in a swale a little bit, and then run it down the driveway, and, and that way we're not producing any water off the driveway. Um, Except the one on the on the uh, on the one side on the uh, probably on the I guess it would be westerly side of the driveway here that runs off, but that's that's nothing. But everything else is captured in the driveway, in the swale, and around the driveway. And my my drainage report covers all that uh, in detail. Uh, we even covered up to the hundred year storm, and that's why I said the hundred year storm uh, going through that culvert. Uh, the water doesn't get more than my like, two inches high for a hundred years. So I forgot the flows. Uh, I don't have them in front of me, but uh, I could get them for you next time, or you can read the report. The flows are not very high. It's it's only it's only capturing maybe uh, I don't know three acres altogether, and then 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 it goes down through the system because all the stuff that if you can see from the house down uh, goes down the hill. And goes into the sweat area and then comes over to the to, to through the brook, so it gets treated, captured, sitting for a while and runs. Uh, if you look at that, when you look at the house, and right below the house where it comes down the hill, 
it's like a ski slope right there in that wetlands. And then, but that's where the water flows into this, uh, um, I don't call it a swamp or something because there's no more elevation change in there. I haven't personally seen it, but it, it's, uh, it, it would be like a little swamp, big swamp. And then uh, the water crosses, goes after the brook. So nothing can charge down the hill with or without us that uh, that would come through the pipe. Anyway, that's what we did. Is that explain it for you? Yeah, thank you for the explanation. Does anyone have any questions on the commission? Phyllis? Unmute yourself. Thank you. So is this lot uh, uh, dividable in the future? Subdividable? Every lot that is this big is subdividable. It's, so, it's not likely because there are not too many places where I could get a system in. Okay. You know, but the, and, 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 you know, I, I can't say for what the people will do. She's not going to subdivide it because she's putting a beautiful house up there for her. She's got a beautiful site. Why would she want to? I'm not saying somebody in the future would, but they'd have to come to you again. For mm -hmm. they, 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 they did. So where is the well on this property? If you could bring up your map again, your site. It, it's, it's up by the, behind the house. Oh, okay. I think Gary disappeared. Yeah, it looks like he did. Joining back, hopefully. Where is, I, I'm trying to look at the map, but where is the septic located again? Because I, I don't see it labeled unless I'm just missing it. Looking on, on the page, it's, it's halfway down the hill. It's about 125 to 150 feet from the, from the crossing. On the, on the left side of the driveway, as you go up. It's like what sticks out on the left towards the... Um, oh, that's... See that? Okay. You see yeah. That just, uh, you know. That's the septic. Okay. I was looking around the house. I, I... Okay. That's we, why we asked about it before. If we could have got it up by the house, yeah. it would be beautiful. But the stuff does. And if you if you scroll down, there's a further detail of it. Right. I I I I gave him detail of of everything. Any well, other I, questions? No. Um, I think without Gary here, we have to wait before we make a decision. We can't make a decision at today's meeting. We can't make a decision at tonight's meeting anyway. So. Right. And the town engineer is going to provide us with some information for next meeting. Right, right. right. Yep. Okay. We can do anything anyway this meeting. Yep. All right. So anyone last chance? Any questions? Nope. All right. I think it's pretty clear then uh, what you're what you're looking to do, and um, I appreciate your time. We'll. Um, so I would assume no public hearing. Um. I think it has to be discussed. But. Yeah, we should we should discuss if it warrants a public meeting, uh, public hearing. Does anyone want to start that conversation? Do we do that tonight, or do we wait till we get input from whoever else has to provide input from the town? That's a question. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I wish Gary was here. <laughs> you don't usually. I mean. Yeah, no, understandable. There's no one here that's contesting it. There's uh, it's a single family dwelling out of the way from other people. I, I can't imagine it would warrant a public hearing. Um, I don't see a need for one. I mean. No, I don't. I don't. After having walked the site, uh, you know, and looking at enough of it. Do we need that? Is does, is that supposed to be a motion, or do we just, if nobody asks for it, we just don't do it? I, I'm, I don't know. I think we'll it would only be a motion if if we were if we wanted to hold one. That, okay, that's what I was asking. Do we yeah. need to make a motion? Do we make a motion not to hold one, or if we don't? I don't think so. We go on to the next agenda item. <clears throat> What's that? We go on to the next agenda item. Okay. All right. So. Um... 
again, thank you for your time. Um, we're not going to move forward with the public hearing and uh, we're going to move on to the next agenda item. Thank you very much. Thank you, I'm going home. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just watched my daughter's game. I rushed over here. They went into extra innings. Oh. <laughs> <I didn't... laughs> All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Jen Lindo just logged in. Or was that Gary trying? I'm not sure. All right, so the next item on the agenda would be pending applications, which there are none. Old business, again, none. Um, there he is. There's Gary. Hey, Gary. Um, so we, we um, in the last, for the um, application, we discussed that we didn't feel it warranted a, any kind of public hearing. So we just moved on to the next agenda item. So I wanna make sure we're following protocol. You are muted, Gary. Sorry, yes, so perfect. Uh, so no public hearing? Correct. Okay. No public hearing. All right, and they'll be back next month. Um, okay, and we, he's gone. Uh, we should get the engineer's report, our town engineer's report by then, so. Okay, yeah, we, we briefly mentioned that, that we would see that next meeting, hopefully. Okay, okay. so you're on pending applications? Uh, we did that, no pending applications, no old business. Uh, chairman's report, I don't have anything. Okay. So we'll move on to you, Inland Wetlands Agent Report. Um, I'm investigating uh, enforcement action at 4 Herster. Uh, looks like they're dumping some construction debris adjacent to the brook. Um, and I have a stack of uh, permits uh, that have come in. I guess I think I've reported at the last meeting. I, I can't recall, but I'll, I'll just say it again that we've just ended the first quarter of the year. And we typically historically um, have issued about seven to eight permits per year. Uh, just within the first quarter, we've issued seven to eight permits. So I'm anticipating we've either triple or will quadruple what we normally do per year. Uh, the good news is it's generating revenue. So um, houses and uh, things that require, based on our fee schedule, um, they have to, it's determined based on the area of disturbance within the upland area is how they determine the fee. Um, so in activities for the permits that I can issue that are outside of wetlands and water courses, we, we calculate that area. And because it, you know, things like a full house will take up a lot of square footage, it drives the fee up. Um, so in that regard, it's working well. Um, and I'm, you know, I haven't had too many people balk at it. Uh, either. So when they're paying $1,000 for a wetland fee uh, for an administrative permit, uh, they seem to be okay with it, knowing, hey, I don't want to wait two months, but I can get, get my permit, it can get reviewed, and I can get it in, in a month or, or two weeks, whatever. Or roughly, I'm, I'm about two weeks behind <laughs> um, with what we have. So it's a two-week, two to three-week turnaround. Um, and right now, I've got one, two, three, six pending permits. Um, for mainly pools, decks, and sheds. Um, so that's all, all, all good. So that's all I have to report right now. I'll let you know about four Herster uh, at the next meeting. Um, I guess uh, there is, uh, I did note there was some uh, clearing on 50 cubals. It's adjacent to the Gorton Pond. Um, that is under a wetland permit that Gary Smith was issued back in, I think it was 2012 or 2015, I can go back and take a look. Um, so with that, uh, he was supposed to notify the agent two days prior. Um, so I'll contact him and find out what his schedule is because um, he, he hasn't even submitted the building permit application. He received the wetland permit that I issued administratively, but no building permit has come forward. So I don't know why he started work necessarily. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that, but the work that was done, uh, there seems to be no erosion from the site um, it's still fairly well vegetated with the scrub shrub 
uh, vegetation minus there's an existing rock wall that holds the bank um, and his plan is not to actually do anything with that wall. Um, and I think most of that's going to be from the shore edge up. It's going to be all vegetated with uh, basically a, a planted buffer um, as compared to what's there now. But uh, other than that, that's all I have to report. Yeah, so I just want to, uh, you know, maybe we could talk about a couple of concerns I have as far as, I think it would be nice if we could um, attach to the agenda the um, applications that you get, Gary, so we're kind of familiar with what's happening in the town, if that would be okay. possible. Um, and then my other concern is last, last month that we talked about signage and you were going to get back to us about the signage, and I noticed it's not on the agenda at all. Yes, there's a, so the, my apologies for not adding that to the agenda. Um, we could have done that earlier. Um, that said, we'll have to add it to next month's agenda. Um, but, but yeah, certainly we can work on the, the signage requirement and a regulation and draft something up. Um, the, the zoning commission is currently uh, debating uh, a sign regulation regarding special permits and the, the requirement to uh, update or modify the sign that they put up. Um, so uh, I think that language that they have in the zoning regs, uh, in the subdivision regs are virtually identical. The planning commission has not um, looked at this uh, option yet. I mean, they do require a sign, but they don't necessarily require it to be updated if the hearings continued. Um, so that's something that you know, we can consider is just take that whole section of the regulations from the zoning commission, if that's the interest of the commission, and we can start working with that or just use the language as it's proposed, if you will, or as it's been written rather than reinvent the wheel. Um, that would be an, an easy thing to do uh, as far as the commission. Uh, we, we do have to hold a public hearing, um, but yeah, we can, we can certainly move that forward and make sure yeah. that to the yeah, and my other concern is um, the site walks and all these years we've always met at the um, town hall. Now, um, seem to be some confusion for the last couple of site walks. I know I had um, sent an email and said that I was going to go to the site walk. That was like a Thursday, late Thursday afternoon. And then I also added, are we still meeting at the town hall? I never got a response. And um, so, you know, your email came through as I was leaving the house. And then we ended up sitting, there's three of us, Jason and, and um, myself and, and Christian. Christian. So I, I'd like to have it more organized and maybe we should have your cell phone. So if there is an issue, we can connect you, connect with you directly. Yeah. I was going to suggest that we all share our cell phones so that we can text each other in a case like what happened on Saturday, because you're right. And and originally, I had a scheduling conflict. So at the very last minute, I texted and found out that Gary was going up there because he had another place to be immediately after. That's why I went up there. Otherwise, I was headed down to town hall. Yeah. But last minute things happened, especially Kristen, you had a uh, a sporting event right after it and Jason had somewhere else to go I think or you know it was I understand your your comment it's valid so I, I, we can work on a, a phone tree and uh, just quickly put that together um, I think we have everyone's contact information at least on my end and I don't yeah I think I do um, if I don't, I can reach out to you or I'll have Jen reach out to you uh, to get it and then we'll put that together and send that out to the, the agency. Um, yeah, even if we could figure out like who, who's going, because we don't want to leave anyone behind and it, it does just feel a little, I don't, I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time on Saturday mornings figuring out who's, who's coming, who's not, where are we meeting, what are we right. doing? Right, and you know, <laughs> I, I tried to email you, Kristen. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to text you, but I didn't have a phone number, so I emailed you, but you didn't see the email. But if you, you probably will see a text before an email. Yeah, right. I think via text, if we could just organize that a little bit better would be good. Okay. And, and I agree with what Phyllis is saying about um, the applications, because I think, you know, from, from our perspective, I know people 
now know I'm on this commission and they're like, oh, do you know so-and-so building here doing that? And, and a lot of the applications I don't know about. So if, we, if there's some way we could see kind of a running tab of what's coming in. You're right. And, and I had a real estate broker call me up who knew I was on the commission and said, I see some activity going on. And I said, I know nothing about it. And she said, it's got to be an intrusion. So I texted Gary and he got back to me fairly quickly and said, yes, there is something going on on that property and it's fully permitted and I'm aware of it. So. Yeah, not that we, you know, if, if just at least moving forward, if maybe we could just get a quick list. I don't know if it's easiest just to add it to the agenda or. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have, I mean, I can read these off now and if you, you choose um, what I have currently in front of me, but I guess moving forward, uh, certainly as, I mean, I can just keep a, a running tab and, you know, as permits are entered into the system. Yeah, I can easily generate you a list. That's not. They don't get posted on the website when they're entered? No, they get posted into a, uh, our permit database system, which is, uh, yeah, I got to work, figure out a, a, probably a new, new software system for our permit tracking. Um, yeah, but uh, I think I did report that we were having issues with it. It was writing over old historic permits. Um, so I, in the interim, I've created a, a separate file, um, which seems to have alleviated that problem. So oh. I'm able to issue permits without writing over old data. Um, with, okay. with that, I can just generate a, a list from Microsoft Access and provide that to you. Yeah, so they can be attached to the agenda? Yeah, I can. That's easy enough. Perfect. Will yeah. that show um, permits that have been denied as well? Like, is that um, all permit applications or just approved? It would be all permit applications. Okay. They all, I, um, yeah, I haven't denied any as of yet. Typically, what I would do is call the applicant and say, hey, here's it. You got to fix this or you got to do this or show me this. They'll do that. And then I can go ahead and issue, you know, unlike the agency, I don't have necessarily the timeline. So my timeline of 65 days could go out 90 days or more if I had to. Um, but when they make application, then we're stuck to statutory application to the agency. We have these statutory timelines. With all this activity, are, are you just flat running out of time to process everything? Uh, slowly, um, between all the all my duties as the town planner as well, spreading, you know, spread kind of thin. But we're right now we're we're staying afloat, so our heads are above water, and uh, we're managing. Um, are they giving you an assistant, Gary? Um, in the budget, I saw something like something in the budget was requested, like to help you out. Yeah, I had requested twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. That got knocked down to sixteen, I believe. Uh, so we're we're looking. We may be able to pick up a few hours um, from uh, the planner up at the Cog, or possibly we're contemplating uh, interns. Um, I did have a gentleman who reached out to me today. He's a real estate agent who was willing to volunteer uh, just to learn kind of the ropes in hopes of one day working for a municipality. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But uh, that's right now we're just kind of figuring out what can we do with this 16,000 additional dollars uh, for additional help. So we'll either be contracting with the COG or maybe doing some paid internships. Um, I also noticed yeah. that I think in Stonington, they're starting to have um, public hearings again. Is, it, is there any sign of East Lime doing it? So um, as of now, uh, this is our last Zoom meeting that we have to have, per se, as the uh, executive orders expire May 20th. After that, we can meet as an agency in person. However, for the purposes of a public hearing, we will have to meet in Zoom because we would not be able to accommodate the social separation distance in town hall. Um, can can we do a combination that. meeting? Well, we, we don't have the equipment in our meeting room to do a hybrid model. And my understanding from other municipalities, the hybrid model is very difficult to not only have to manage the, the meeting that's going on in, in live, but also all of your participants that are in your Zoom. 
it gets with the public hearing, you got people standing there, you know, giving testimony and then you have your zoom. So it, it can get cumbersome. Um, so my discussions with Mark have been just, if you have to have a public hearing, use zoom. Yeah. Um, so at this point, so next month we should be able to have a regular meeting at the town hall because we don't have a public hearing. Correct. And it, you know, as you can see from attendance tonight, it was just Bob. We probably have just Bob. Uh, one of the difficulties we'll have is maintaining six foot between each member up at on the stage there. So uh, we're trying to figure out how to accommodate the room to, to, to set up for the larger commissions that have seven members or more, six, six but we have six plus all mm -hmm. Um So that's kind of where we are with that. Um, in regards to the budget though, that said what, what the Board of Finance did say was that if we found that we needed additional dollars to come back, because that's what contingency is for. So, you know, that said, they, they're proceeding cautiously and saying, hey, do you really need the additional money? Let's see what happens here. Um, I would also note that the building official also put in for additional dollars for the, you know, for help um, basically to hire a full time uh, assistant building official. Right now we have two part time officials, and I think one will be leaving. And the other would probably take on the additional hours if, if it was to become full time. Uh, that said, Board of Finance cut that request also down quite a bit. Um, so, and again, said, hey, if you need to need more hours, come back and see us. So, that's kind of where we're at um, in regards to the, the budget. So, if the agency, we, we can kind of keep an eye on where things are at in the, in the workload and, and you know, proceed accordingly. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess, so that's, oh, there's enforcement. You did talk about the two. Did you by chance look into that one that I sent you on Old Black Point Road? Um, which was the uh, clearing of wetland and they installed a drainage grating and. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. I don't, it's not coming back to me. So I probably, the answer to that would be no at this time. Okay. I, will... I think it's in the fifties, maybe old black point road. I can look at my email again. I, yeah, I sent. This, um, this is a public meeting, Gary. Is this recorded? Yes. Okay. We should be careful about addresses and stuff on the thing, shouldn't we? Or no. Yeah, I guess if we're uncertain of the address, we can. Yeah, I'm not certain what the address is. I'll have to look it up, but I can send I can send it to you again if you don't have the email. And you're right, and this kind of ties back into not really knowing what applications were, you know, submitted. So they very well could have an application for the work. I, I don't know. So I don't want to anyone right. think that I'm negatively calling somebody out. Yeah, I know you had sent me one uh, that was last year in June about the pool water. Um, oh, yeah, no, that was a different matter. Uh, oh, there was one back. Okay, I think that was permit question. Okay, I have it here. All right, I'll take a look into that uh, okay, tomorrow. Okay. And then, so I'm moving on correspondence from Eversource. Uh, cor Oh, correspondence from Eversource. I reported at the last meeting uh, that we had received that correspondence. Uh, some of you may have seen uh, some police vehicles and work at the entrance of the power line trail off of Route 1 at the exit 75 count connector there with Route 1 and um, up that power line, Eversource is doing work. Um, they were just notifying us of that work. Um, all that is permitted under the Connecticut Siting Council. So just a FYI. All right. Um, that takes us to adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move we adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. All right. So maybe we'll see each other in person next month. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't. Jen will no. let us know. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, as of now, I don't anticipate any public hearings. Obviously, you didn't. Uh, see that this one needed one, uh, the, the item on the agenda. So 
I'm, I'm thinking we can meet in, in, in person. Um, there's no reason why we can't. Obviously, wear a mask if you feel oh, you have to wear a mask in town hall. So right. we'll be yeah. masked um, unless you prefer to Zoom. But that's it. Great. Thanks. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Well, thank you.